Coverage of the Needham Select Board is brought to you by Louise Condon Realty, representing buyers and sellers since 1985. to order the select board meeting in Needham on Tuesday, May 10th at 6 p.m. Um, everybody is here and so we are ready to roll for tonight. The first item on our agenda is public comment. If there is anybody who's here to make a public comment. All right, thank you. Then we will move on to the first item, which is a grant of location at 500 Dedham Avenue is Joanne coming on. All right, and if I could ask Hank Half actually to come join us for this grant of location at the table. Thank you, Hank. Hello, Ms. Good Callender. Here. Good evening, how are you? I'm doing very well, yourself? Good, so um, you are here for our grant of location. For a new poll, do you want to describe? Sure. So we're here seeking a grant location to install a new pole at 500 Denham Avenue, but also 21 feet of conduit. And this service or the items are necessary to provide um, the electric vehicle charging stations. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Fitzpatrick, is it in order? Yes, it is. All right. Um, so this is a public hearing. I don't know if there's anyone in the public who would wish to speak. If, if not, then I will open it up for the board. I know that there have been some questions relating to the charging stations. And so Hank, do you wanna maybe describe the state of charging stations in town and how these will fit within them and sort of what we've been thinking about with charging stations? Uh, yes, certainly, Madam Chair. Um, so we, under this program, um, Mass EVIP program, which is a grant program um, associated with the um, uh, Mass DEP, um, we have already installed uh, two pairs of charging stations, uh, one at Rosemary Recreation Center parking area, the lower parking area, and the other at Zero Chestnut Street parking, which is the downtown parking. Um, this is the third of the three that were applied for underneath that program. And it will be uh, four charging stations, so two pillars and four stations, um, over next to the uh, PSAP building, <clears throat> immediately to the, um, let's see, as you're entering the building, immediately to the right of, the, of that entry. And um, each of those stations under the program is set up so that it could expand to a total of 10 charging stations. Um, those alternate locations um, would be relatively simple uh, in the first two instances, but um, those would come at a future time if and as necessary. Um, so far under this program, um, no fees have been charged for the electrical service um, when people plug in. That might be something this board would want to consider in the future. Um, and I can distribute um, to the town manager um, some examples of what other towns are doing. Um, and maybe you're already aware of what uh, Wellesley College is doing and what Wellesley is doing. Um, but under this program, the town is also, uh, because of the grant funding, is obligated to report to them the amount of charging that's automatically done underneath the charge point um, system. 
they have access to all of that data. But then uh, we will at some point um, sponsor something similar to what Wellesley has just done, which uh, encourages its uh, opportunity for town folk to um, look, view, and test drive electric vehicles uh, in the hope of expanding the interest in that. And certainly the Climate Action Plan Committee is looking at transportation broadly as um, one of the issues associated with uh, the upcoming Climate Action Plan. Do you know um, how much charging we are providing from the currently installed units? Um, I know from the two public parking lot ones. Um, I don't have the total, let's see, do I have the total wattage? I know the total cost. It's averaging about $300 a month for the Chestnut Street uh, lot and about $400 a month for the Rosemary Street lot. I don't have the kilowatt hours information. <clears throat> and do we also have data for the for um, Sunia Williams? Um, John Regan uh, will be able to download that information. Um, in that instance, the power is supplied through the electric meter for the school, and so it's not it's not an isolated meter. Um, under this mass EVIP program, we have to have an isolated meter. Um, however. Uh, ChargePoint does track that information, and um, it's through the ChargePoint account that we would be able to download that and also to begin charging for the power if and as needed. Okay. Uh, and li likewise, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, the, there are two other ChargePoint um, stations adjacent to the storage building of the DPW. Those go through the DPW um, meter, and so it's only through charge point that we can get that data. Do you have a sense of whether most of this usage is by citizens in town or by town vehicles? Um, I think the majority of the power that's being used in Rosemary and chestnut lots are by citizens in town or visitors. Okay. Um, the, um, the town currently owns two uh, EV uh, vehicles that were purchased approximately five years ago and those have been charging at the DPW storage building. <clears throat> the, um, and perhaps once the, all of these other charge stations are up and operational, those two might be devoted strictly to town vehicles, um, depending upon the deployment and the purchase of future um, EV vehicles for the town fleet. I know that the school department is also interested in looking at uh, EV buses and vans. And um, that's, uh, that'll be a separate uh, discussion with them in the near future. And then, Hank, do you know if the um, underlying power behind the electricity is green or is still fossil fuel based for the power that's coming into the town for this purpose? The um, Sunita Williams School does have solar PV on the rooftop that feeds through the same meter, common meter for the school. So during the daytime, um, any vehicles that are charging there when the sun is out um, would probably be getting green power. Mm -hmm. um, that solar installation provides about 40% of the power for the overall building. I don't have a breakdown between the EV charging and the, whenever I plug in over there, it's um, not crowded. Okay. Um, whereas um, 
in terms of green power, as you're aware, the town has a very large installation at the RTS. 100% of that power goes into the grid. <clears throat> the town gets the benefit um, through net metering. And um, so I would suspect that I can't trace the power exactly, but some of that power is offset. Is offset offsetting. OK. All right. Thank you for that. Other questions? Heidi? Thank you for being here. Um, if, um, if the town did eventually pick up green municipal aggregation to, to change our electric mix to all green, um, these would be able to pick up that, I mean, that, that would change the, the source. Yep. Correct. Correct. Like once we change over as a town, that would make our chargers green. Yes, and I, I think those aggregation programs have varying percentages of green power. Right. And, yeah. and some of them are, I believe it's Lexington, is now looking at 100% green power. Mm -hmm. um, but those contracts um, are something that the Climate Action Plan Committee will need sure, to, something to aspire to investigate. Um, the chargers that have been installed thus far and the ones that are about to go in, um, those are level two chargers? Correct. Okay, and as charge point chargers, I imagine they're um, sort of the standard so that most cars can can use them? Yes. Um, the high, the high um, level three chargers, which are similar to Tesla charges, mm -hmm. um, are very rapid chargers, but are probably three times the cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, we haven't considered any of those. <clears throat> I think that if, as in the future, uh, when the DPW, for instance, begins to look at Ford F-150s or other similar EV um, vehicles to supplement their fleet, it might be necessary to include that type of charging station within the DPW. That's right. And likewise, within uh, the Newman lot, uh, if the town progresses with uh, buses. EV buses. Okay. And there are several um, municipalities and cities uh, within the Boston area that are beginning to convert. Um, one last thing. Uh, you said that this bank is going in at PSAB, which is great, but um, I wonder if there are any plans to put chargers in the parking lot by the center uh, commuter rail station? Um, because I, if we expand eventually to 10 units, I mean, I can just see that that would be more accessible, perhaps, for someone to like park their car while they're doing errands or going out to eat versus going down to PSA basically to charge and just hanging out and waiting. <laughs> yeah, the, the, um, that's a great idea. Um, the question is, how many spaces are we prepared to give up exclusively to EV cars mm -hmm. compared to any car? And um, those that are installed um, are for EV parking only while charging. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the way it's signed. So um, that's a broader discussion. Thank you. Other comments? Yeah. Well, thanks for being here. And I'd just be interested to, to know on um, how long it took Lexington to go. You said they're at 100% green now. And I guess, do we have any idea what that transition or what that process looks like if we were to, to do that as well? To go for 100% green? Yeah, so where they are right now with their charging or stations and where they're getting their energy from. Actually, can I interrupt? Yes. I'm going to say that this is really a topic for the climate Got it. committee. Okay. And they will be having a full discussion okay. of this. It's actually, it's non-trivial, right? There's costs involved. Mm -hmm. It's more expensive to go more green. There's actually, at some point, there's a state where the, there's a place at some point where the state won't be able to provide enough green power for everybody who wants it. All right. Mm -hmm. All of all of those factors will be true. Um, and the fact that it does have a cost means there's several steps that we're going to have before, before we, we can get, get to that. that. So we will there. come back and have a bigger discussion right. of this once the climate committee can come back. All right, thanks. So I think that's the place to have that discussion. Yep. 
Any other Thank questions? You. Just a couple things, a um, couple concerns actually. Um, I, we all go to that building quite often, and I know to me, four spaces, I just, and I know you've already done the research, it just, it's a very tight lot. You have a lot of builders zooming in in the morning and trying to get there when the permits close. And I just want to make sure that, I don't know if you can limit the hours of the charging uh, where it's just not so crazy around there, you know, for those spaces. Um, and the second is just in this location, and we talk about schools where teachers might plug in and they're there the whole day and they're coming from out of town or somewhere uptown where people might go shopping and leave it for hours on end and might be from out of town. I'm just wondering in this location, it's really Needham residents going in and out of a building for like a quick amount of time. So I just want to kind of monitor it and just make sure that this is kind of the best area to use these and if we had to open up, I know they're dedicated spaces for I think town cars next to it, uh, town spaces, maybe that's something we can swap if it gets too crowded. So those are just a couple of my concerns. Of course, I think the more we expand, I would like to see, I think, Rosemary, if you, you have your children there and you go in the pool, again, you plug in for uh, a longer time and maybe get a better benefit. Um, if we are to do a fee structure, I think it should be something where, you know, first, and I don't know what other towns do, you have all that information, but, you know, first half hour, first hour is free, and then, you know, we don't want the abuse of someone just leaving it and saying, you know, I get free electricity here, so that's not the intent. But thanks for looking into us. I know you've made a lot of gains in, in finding these opportunities and uh, look forward to uh, seeing how this works out. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And real quick, um, when does this program end? The, the EVIP program? Yeah. Uh, when they run out of money? Um, <laughs> well, precisely. <laughs> but but I, believe, I believe that there's some additional uh, funding coming through right. the federal funding as well as the, the recent state funding. I've not researched that yet. Okay. But, but it's a great deal. I mean, it's a great incentive to get an EV vehicle. So. I hope so. Yeah, We've got two. So, right. Hank, I look forward to having you back. Clearly, there's a bigger discussion, probably an initial discussion with this board to talk about charging, not charging, what some of those models are. Um, in other communities so that we make a conscious decision as opposed to a decision we've kind of backed into mm -hmm. about what the intent is there and um, and we'll look forward to hearing what the proposals are that come from the climate committee so um, Ms. Callender, I'm sure you didn't expect to have a full-fledged discussion of this, of the use that's tied to your particular tel telephone pole that you're looking for siting on. Any other questions particularly related to the siting of the pole? And if there are none, I would welcome a motion. Madam Chair, I move that the Select Board approve and sign a petition from Eversource Energy to install a new pole on an approximately 21 feet of conduit in Dedham Avenue. Second. With a second. Further discussion? Yeah, I said one qu uh, question for Matt. Um, when you talked about possibly seeing how many are Needham residents only in that space or how to monitor that, how would we even how do how would we monitor something like that? Just I just don't know how we would do that and see if people are just in there for 15 minutes or so. If it's Needham residents versus people coming from out of town, or right. uh, uh, Madam Chair, I, I think it would be metered, and you would and okay. correct me if I'm wrong. You would understand if you just have small pockets of demand because it's a short trip, or you have maybe employees using it. That would be a longer, you know. Um, more expansive time. I think the idea is that it's not for Needham residents, but the type of trips to that building, I was just concerned, are short in nature and from Needham residents because of the utility, whereby they could probably do it at home, um, unlike if someone went elsewhere, like a school or a park or the town center parking lot and is going to get on the train um, or coming from a different location, it would just be a longer time that they would be charged. So it's nothing against Needham residents, it's more of the utility of it if it's gonna be a short burst to that location. Okay. Any other discussion? Then coming into the vote, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0, unanimous. Thank you, Ms. Callender. Thank you, Thank you to Hank Thank and you. Cecilia for coming in. Have a great evening. You too. Bye-bye.
All right, the next item on our agenda is Public Works Week. Mr. Olson is back. <laughs> and Cecilia's thing. He, he has planted trees and now he's on to the big, the big uh, machines, right? Well, and all the people who run them. Yes, good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Nice to see everyone again tonight. Good to see you. Do you want to make any comments about Public Works Week or before we before we start? Then we do have a proclamation. So Yeah, that would be great. Uh, so thank you. It's our pleasure, for Cecilia and I, to come tonight to have you uh, hopefully sign and approve the proclamation for Public Works Week. Um, I've been working Public Works for 11 years now. And my background was golf course. I was a golf course superintendent. I took care of country clubs. And I thought that was really my life calling. And uh, I, I took a change 11 years ago and came to Public Works. I'll be honest with you, uh, it's been great. Uh, it's been challenging, uh, difficult at times sometimes to live in the community that you work in um, because you kind of never get away. But, uh, <laughs> but so, so rewarding. Um, we're very lucky to have the staff that we have, the management we have, the continuity of service with all the people that we work with, and uh, we, we do great work, and we're really lucky to touch the community in ways that really nobody else in this community does. Uh, from the roads, the sidewalks, the water, the sewer, the drainage, the parks, the open space. Uh, I think we heard at town meeting, we touch a lot of people's lives, so, and, and what I think I heard at town meeting is they can't get enough of public works. <laughs> uh, so truly it's our pleasure to be here tonight. Um, we've had a lot of changes over the past couple of years. Uh, we, as I said, we've had great continuity of leadership. Um, Rick Merson was kind of a legend in town and we we're really lucky to have kind of been mentored by Rick and kind of seen the good, the bad, the ugly, but Rick was kind of there, and Rick really was public works through and through. Rick was a national public works president of APWA and really a leader in the industry. And uh, I think we all kind of feel like it's our obligation to keep up uh, what Rick started for us. So we're lucky that we have Karis after Rick, and, uh, and you know, the team is, is changing every day. Uh, just like everybody else, the last couple of years have brought great changes to us, but I think we've we persevered and we have uh, some great staff and again, uh, we do very meaningful, worthwhile work and it's our, our pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you. Terrific. So I am going to actually open it up by asking Mr. Nelson if yeah. he will give us the proclamation first. Absolutely will. <clears throat> so the proclamation states, whereas public works service provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry, citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public work systems in programs such as water, sewers, drains, streets, and highways, traffic control, public buildings, solid waste disposal, recycling, parks and forestry, and snow removal, and whereas the health safety and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities as well as their planning, design, and construction are vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. Now therefore, be it resolved that the select board do hereby proclaim the week of May 16th through May 22nd as National Public Works Week in the town of Needham and calls upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the problems involved in providing our public works and to recognize the contributions which public works employees make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. All right, is that a motion? So moved. Yeah. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair, if I could uh, say one last thing. Uh, we do have a public works video that we'd like to share with you all that I think kind of really embodies what Marcus just said. And Marcus, great job on that uh, proclamation. You're getting to be a real pro lately, I'll tell you. <laughs> Thank you, Miles.
but sweet, and I think you might recognize that some of our staff were actually in that video as well. So it's, again, our pleasure to be here tonight, and thank you for your support. That was like an IMAX movie. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. I felt the vibration of that. Right. <laughs> um, well, I, I just want to add my thanks to the proclamation, which we will actually vote. Um, but it is uh, always a pleasure, and I actually am grateful for everything that the department does. I particularly take pride when people tell me that Needham has the best streets in the snow compared to others, um, because I know what a trick that is for everybody, particularly after the last winter, even though fortunately we didn't have tons and tons of it. But um, it's always a good thing. And now we're in a new season. We'll be hearing different comments. So that's what happens. Thanks, Madam Chair, I'll just echo that, you know, you talk about touching all aspects, and you look at town meeting, you look at park and rec, and you look at, and I do this sometimes when I'm, you know, doing some history, is going through the old town meeting minutes and how far back and how appreciated, um, you talk about Rick Merson, uh, Bobby Hugh, and, uh, you know, was uh, names all throughout, uh, you know, our town meeting, and it's just, uh, you do an incredible job, Eddie, on our fields and parks, and, and we do have a lot of, uh, committed people who have the longevity is terrific and from our trees to the grass to the fields and it was great to be at that uh, tree ceremony at uh, station two uh, to see that go in and that'll flourish so thank you for all that you do and the department really appreciate it very very nice to see thank You're you welcome Jeff. thank you thank you all right any other comments kevin yeah, this is sure. thank you for to you and the department you guys do a great job from the coldest nights to the hottest days and one of the highlights of getting elected is that you get to go around and see all the departments. And um, the grand tour of DPW facilities was amazing. It was absolutely eye-popping to see how much you do, how well you do it, and how committed you guys are to it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> all right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you. So it is proclaimed Public Works Week. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Cecilia. Thank, Thank you. Cecilia. Okay. The next item on our agenda is a public hearing, a dangerous dog hearing. I think that um, folks are joining us online. Our legal counsel, Mr. Heap, is here. Attorney Heap. Bring people in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello, Attorney Cohen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. And is um, is Miss Rizal joining us as well? She yes. Is, there she is. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Ah, you are driving. You drive. Okay. Um, I need to pull over some. Yeah. That's a good idea. All right. Well, let me uh, open the hearing. This is the second session of a select board hearing held pursuant to general laws chapter 40 section 157 and section 3.7 of the town's general bylaws concerning the dog named Axel of 233 West Street. The select board opened the hearing on April 13th, 2022. The select board determined at the time that Axel is a dangerous dog and ordered the owner to take action in response. The select board continued the hearing until this evening to allow for further review of the dog's behavior and the owner's response. So I recognize that this really was the, not the night of your choosing. Um, the select board had a number of conditions and those conditions were um, not being met. So let's actually go through each condition tonight and I would just like to understand um, from you what's been done at this point in response to each. Um, the first condition was that Axel be confined to the premises of its owner, Ms. Razul, at 233 West Street, and provided that confined shall mean securely confined indoors or confined outdoors in a securely enclosed and locked pen or dog run area at 233 West Street. 
such pen or dog run shall have a secure roof, and if such enclosure has no floor secured to the sides thereof, the side shall be embedded into the ground for not less than two feet, and within the confines of such pen or dog run, a dog house or proper shelter from the elements shall be provided to protect the dog. So tell me where we are with respect to that first item. Go ahead, Jane. Oh, okay. So, well, so then I will, I'll do it and then they can ask you questions. I'll tell them what yep. the update is. So, okay. uh, so all of this information has been provided. Uh, the So she's complying with the first one. I don't think the dog has left the property at all except for training purposes and um, and for for the one of the other things that you ordered for the veterinary review of the neuter uh, and as the pictures that we've shared show the fence is completely this is this is uh, a super strong fence it's at least it appears to be about seven at least seven feet high based on the folks in the picture uh, there's rebar to reinforce the base of it so that dogs cannot dig out and then inside of that fenced in area is a pen the gate was attached, I believe, today. And for shelter purposes, there's two dog houses that have been ordered. I'm not sure, I think on Amazon, I'm not sure, but those are um, on their way to be delivered. So she's moved forward with that. And just to be clear, I don't think it was anybody's expectation that everything ordered would be done within a week or two. It's just that we're providing progress reports that this stuff will get done. I mean, typically, offense can take up to 90 days, but luckily she got it in order. So, so I certainly agree that it's not the expectation that everything be done within the week or even necessarily within the month. I think the progress reports are the question, all right? I believe you reported that information this afternoon at 3.30, is that correct? Uh, that's what I reported this week. We reported last week, um, and then there were in-person updates uh, in the weeks prior. You reported last week. Sure did, May 2nd. I don't think I have any report from last week. Well, then your attorney should turn it over to you. What from last week? Because I will say, the, the, this was not supposed to happen tonight, you know, this meeting, but fine, we moved everything around. And the updates, yeah, the updates were coming. I mean, I don't understand how you end the last hearing saying, okay, we'll find a new date. And then as punishment, I'm told, no, no, we're not finding a new date for you. But okay, we're here. So because she is committed to this, and I'm not going to let anybody try to question that, despite how many have tried over the last few weeks. Um, I'm not sure if the board knows what goes on out there, but I'll tell you, I am I'm disappointed in, in, in what's happening. But despite all that, my client is getting everything done, and that's why we're here. So, Attorney Cohen, I appreciate your disappointment. My understanding is the first time we heard from you, I believe, is April 29th, all right, from a hearing on April 13th where we expected to hear weekly, all right? I just want to be clear. There, there was a communication that I can see on April or on May 2nd, but that did not actually provide an update. It asked for further information. All right, and then there was the communication today, which no, was your was second communication with an update. Okay, so so let's just keep going through the Wait, action items. Wait, are you saying you didn't get an update on May 2nd? I see on May 2nd some questions. To me or from That's from April 29th, yeah. So, April, so on May 2nd, there were just really some questions, but not what I would exactly call an update. Okay. Uh, we provided pictures of the fence and an update on the, on the dog's ultrasound because it ends up the dog does need uh, invasive the surgery. The pictures that was were all from shared. the 29th of April. Thank you. Um, so, so we've not seen pictures of the pen yet. I believe. You have informed us this afternoon that the pen is complete, but we've not seen pictures of the pen yet. Am I correct well, your, in that? Then your attorney should pass them along to you. 
did the attorney receive them after five o'clock today? I was asked for them earlier today and I provided. Uh, it may have been after uh, maybe five, five fifteen. All right. Well, at some point, those will be forwarded to us. Certainly, they were not part of your 3.30 update, so we will um, look for them. But trying to figure out what's going on has been part of the focus of this board because there are many neighbors who are expecting us to understand whether the compliance is in process and what the schedule, expected schedule might sure. be for that. And that's so, why we're here. So let's draw a line. It has nothing to do with you. Let's just draw a line, let's get the information, because um, she is doing a good job, so I don't want the stuff behind the scenes to uh, take away from that. Okay. All right. So um, we are curious to understand the pen. The fence did not match uh, our understanding of what, certainly of what a pen should be and what a secure area should be for Axel. Um, and, and I say that because the fence that I saw pictures of on April 29th that you mailed and that I've subsequently seen going by the house um, does not match this standard from chapter 46, section 157, indicating that it needs to have a secure roof and if such enclosure has no floor secured to the sides thereof, the sides shall be embedded in the ground for not less than two feet. So. We'll look forward to seeing the pen and understanding if the pen meets the requirements in the um, chapter and section. All right? I'm presuming that will come in another update if it's not clear in something that you emailed after hours tonight. Number two, that a fence sufficient to prevent escape be erected around the premises. I under so we have seen a fence. The fence has been erected. Uh, I don't know if this dog is a digger. If the dog is a digger, the fence will not uh, meet the purpose. So we remain uh, interested in seeing what the pen is like. So let's talk about the fence because there is rebar that's the fence, as far as I'm concerned, is, has been made to be dig proof. But what we don't, what this is, right? This is not a license for the police to come and go all over our property. Someone criticized her because he could put his uh, hand into the fence and that a little kid could put his fingers in there. Let's all, that was not what this is about. People can have chain link fences where you can put your fingers in. So um, we're getting you the information. That is the most sturdy fortress that I've seen in a long time from a client. But the, the prodding of the police coming there and saying, this is, look at this fence. I can put my fingers in it. I mean, she's doing all this in spite of that, but let's not antagonize. And, and unfortunately, it's built up over the few weeks, but come on, people shouldn't be going there. It, it, there's no specificity as to whether a fence should be fully private or not, and she's got the fence up. Why not? Okay. I, I just understood from the, the law that the fence needed to be something that we didn't think a dog could escape from. It's not clear to me from the fence I've seen that that meets that standard, but and we'll get you I, I that appreciate information. it. We'll okay. get you uh, information so you can be confident with that. Thank you for that information when it comes. We'll look forward to it. All right, that when removed from said premises, Axel will be securely and humanely muzzled and restrained by an adult, 18 or older, with a chain or other tethering device, et cetera. Again, from the statute, to the best of my knowledge, um, Axel has not been removed from the property other than to go to the vet or something like that. I would understand, Diana, have you been involved in each time when that's been the case? Yes, it's only me handling them, and uh, one at a time. We've been going to uh, the training. Um, I'm taking my daughter with me, um, and they're muzzled, and I got uh, uh, chain um, leashes for, with um, over 300, I think, 350 pounds of strength. And it's three feet. Okay, thank we you. We just exchanged them, yeah. All right. Um, item number four, that acts will be neutered unless the owner provides the select board with written evidence that a veterinarian is of the opinion that Axel is unfit for alterations because of a medical condition. Um, so, so. <laughs> well, Axel's not, he's not unfit for neuter, but his neuter um, at the Chestnut Street Animal Hospital, there's a surgeon, Dr. Fisher, who has to perform the surgery. It's not a straight neuter, as I alluded to before. Uh, it's invasive, again, for um, reasons that we said last hearing. So he is being scheduled. He had an ultrasound at Blue Pearl that revealed this, 
and then he's being scheduled for that surgery. It's just, um, and Diana can speak about the time frame for the surgery. And did I get that right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I just actually, I have been contacting um, just that street animal hospital for many times to be able to talk to the doctor about his condition and if he's fit or not. Um, they haven't called me. It was just today, actually, around 4 p.m., where the vets called me there and she told me that um, Dr. Fisher is going to be assigned to do his surgery, but due to his schedule, they're going to the front desk. Um, gonna contact him and they contact me and if he's too busy because I told them that the town is requiring him to be neutered as soon as possible so they said if his schedule is too full then they're gonna refer me to Blue, uh, Blue Pearl Hospital uh, they have surgeons there also I'm sorry I lost some of that um, so, so it sounds like there's not a date um, I, yeah, I'm waiting for them to have, you know, like um, availability with the surgeon. So as soon as they have availability, they will call me. All right. So we will be interested in a date in future progress reports. Okay. That a behavioral analysis be conducted on Axel by a certified animal behaviorist and a copy of the written report be submitted to the select board. Um, I don't have any current updates on that. So today I, I shared with Diana three behaviors that could be available for her, and I shared that um, late afternoon with town council. <clears throat> um, the three I've suggested, Dr. Amy Marr, Dr. Terry Bright, who is with MSPCA Angel, and Dr. Stephanie Bornswell with Tufts. Those are, in, for me, the three that I know the most and the three who, when Diana explains to them why she needs to get in there um, and that she's a client of mine, she should be able to get a relatively quick appointment. And sometimes, right now, they're three and four months out, but she should be able to get in sooner than that. And the purpose of it, as I told her, is to Attorney. figure out Cohen, I, I, I'm actually glad to hear that you provided uh, some names to, to Diana, to Ms. Rizzo, for um, potential consultants in this area. Was there some impediment to providing her that data some other time in the last four weeks? Just on my end. Okay. All right. It, again, it would have been useful to have some other update, but I'm appreciative that that information has now been pro provided, and I look forward to hearing when it can be scheduled. That Axel's owner, Ms. Diana Rizulaga, provide proof of insurance in an amount not less than $100,000, insuring her against any claim, loss, damage, or injury to persons, domestic animals, or property resulting from the acts, whether intentional or unintentional of Axel, or proof that reasonable efforts were made to obtain such insurance if a policy has not been issued. Um, it, my understanding, uh, and there is, has been at least one update, there was one today, that said the home insurer has confirmed that she has coverage, but that you still don't have that in writing. So right. that is something that we're expecting again in a future update, and we would like the town to receive proof of that coverage when you have it. Okay. Okay. That Axel's owner pay all veterinary bills resulting from the March 14, 2022 incident or reimburse the victim's dog owner for bills previously paid as applicable within 14 days of receipt of this order. Um, so the order was on April 20th. I believe I understand that the vet bills have been paid. I'm not quite certain as of when, but they are now resolved, is my understanding. Is there any right. clarification there? They've been paid and the money's been withdrawn from her account. Okay. Um, that Axel's owner, Ms. Diana Rosola Aga of 233 West Street, provide the chief of police a weekly update in writing on the status relating to Axel with each specific condition included in this decision. In that area, we saw the update after we asked uh, on April 29th 
And then you provided the update this afternoon, May 10th at 3.30. Um, how can we obtain regular updates in the future? And what well, day of the um, week would you like to provide them? Well, one thing was now we have the, the chief's email. Uh, and now I have a copy of the order. I wasn't given a copy of the order timely. So well, No, 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 no. I, I don't understand. I know that the order was emailed. I know that it was sent via okay. certified mail. I, I, I can't understand how you wouldn't have a copy of the to order. To my client, it was sent, not to me. I had a request, but as far as the updates, she now has the chief's email address, and she was included. They were all, and the chief was included in an email today with all of us. And the hope is that it's just going to go from Diana to the chief. And uh, but as far as what day, so we were doing a Monday. Today's Tuesday. Um, Diana, you just need to pick it if the board doesn't pick a time and date of when the chief can expect. Just a quick email, here's what I did this week. Even if it's nothing new, but you went to training or whatever, the chief needs to know your Okay, okay. Well, we can do every Thursday. On Thursday? On Thursday. All right, that's fine. As long as you pick the day, we'll know when to expect it. Okay. That all other orders included in the select board's decision dated January 13th remain in full force and effect immediately. The skilled training that you've been done and have, have uh, undertaken and have continued and steps to ensure 233 West that there are no additional inadvertent releases of the dogs outside the home. So we expect that to continue and we appreciate that. Um, and look training has continued on uh, every Sunday. A, a report will come um, to the chief's, the next update for the chief with a letter from, it's Canine East in Wuhan, Mike, Mike W, who's doing the training. So he'll confirm that she's made all of her appointments and, and what they're working on. Okay, thank you for that. Attorney Heat. Madam Chair, I just want to clarify a couple of points for the record. Um, the board's order was sent by email to attorney cohen by me on april 21st i received the first update from attorney cohen on may 2nd and the contents of that email was uh, forwarding a, an update from his client to him that was dated april 29th so 52 forwarded an update dated april 29th the next update received after that uh, was received um, from attorney cohen by me late this afternoon. Thank you, Attorney Heat. All right, I don't know if the others on the board have any other questions at this time. Madam Chair, a couple of things. And Attorney Cohen, I understand you're, you're vigorous in your defense of your client and on this, uh, this case here. I just, it's not helpful how it's coming across. I think accusing the board of somehow punishing you or your client with a date um, our concern was to make sure that we had the information because this is extremely time sensitive that we get this in front of us and with the materials that we had it was not worth even waiting a day to get that in front of us. Um, the comments about the police not that they're harassing your clients somehow I will just say looking at these pictures to me it's unclear the compliance level so I support the police going in and checking as often as they seem uh, think is is reasonable to make sure that compliance uh, as this project is going on is achieved. Um, you know I, I think with these conditions and you know if we did a straw poll of the board last meeting um, there was some discussion of euthanasia and to me this was a second chance um, and the idea here is to try to continue that second chance uh, but once credibility is breached or anything of that nature, you know, it's going to be a different discussion. I'm not saying that has been done yet, but we're trying to work with you and your client uh, to achieve the best oh. outcome. And at In the terms same of time, uh, Attorney Cohen, attorney I'm, still said, I'm, I'm still speaking. I'm still speaking. Thank you. I thank you. I have the I have the floor, Miss Attorney Cohen. I have the floor. It, thank you. you. Um, so lastly, I will say, I appreciate that. Um, that we have to look out for the neighbors that surround this property. And if it seems that we are being demanding or you think unreasonable, and I do look at that crate and I, I hope that that is completed, um, it's just because we're trying to protect 
the neighbors and go by uh, the, the law as written. So um, with that, um, I guess I would ask maybe Attorney Heap if the next step or Madam Chair would be some type of continuous uh, continuation to make sure that there is still compliance on this issue before we make a final ruling. Is that where and the board is leading? I think that's a reasonable approach for the board to take, where the board has ordered um, nine different that the dog owner do nine different things in response to the finding that the dog is dangerous um, and a number of those items remain either incomplete or in process or outstanding. Uh, I think it's perfectly appropriate for the board to uh, keep the hearing open and continue it to a later date certain. What's your expectation? What's your fair and reasonable expectation for this stuff? And Chris, please. I just emailed you, send me the email where you sent me the order on 421, because I don't have it. I have yours sending it to me on 427. But please, if you're gonna make a statement, let's make sure it's accurate. This is what I'm talking about, these little things that add up, because she's doing a good job. So, you're I appreciate you that me? your defense of that, that is not a good job that we know about because the yeah. one thing that the board asked very clearly for was weekly updates. That has not been met. Are there other questions? Because otherwise I think the question before the board right now is, is this something where we're going to need a progress update in two weeks or progress update in four weeks? And um, if we were receiving regular updates, I would have more confidence in saying four weeks might be adequate, but well, our track record is not so good. May 2nd? May 10th, so you've received two straight for the last two weeks. I got the order on April 27th. I'd like to have that within two weeks at the latest. Okay. Agreed. Yeah. All right. So the sense of the board is that we would like to um, continue the hearing to um, May 24th, which is two weeks from tonight. Um, we will find a time certain on May 24th. Well, I have a dangerous dog hearing that night, but it won't matter, so just make this one. You can do this without me, and she can answer the questions, all right? Because she'll have kept up with the um, updates by then. But I would tell you I have a dangerous dog hearing at 7 in Newbury, but whatever. Your other Don't dangerous know. dog hearing is at what time? In Newbury, they're at 7. Oh, if you do it at 6. We could but do this okay at if she six. Does it, without me. it might be better for everybody if she can update you without me. All right. I'm okay with that. So we will schedule that at a time that you might be able to attend, but certainly you can make a decision about whether Ms. Rizzo should um, be the person to update us at that time. So we will want to do that uh, on the 24th at early in our agenda. Okay. And so we will let you know exactly what time it's scheduled. Um, do we need to take a formal vote? We do to continue the hearing, or I would take a vote to continue the hearing to May 24th at 6 o'clock. All right, then I would welcome a motion to continue the hearing to May 24th at 6 p.m. So moved, and Madam Chair. Just to clarify, that'll be at Town Hall, Powers Hall. So I want to do a place certain on that. That will be at Town Hall and Powers Hall. Sir, thank you. Second. Any other discussion? Does this Updates no, it does not preclude the weekly updates. There's still an obligation for weekly updates. It does not change any of that. It just changes the formal check-in with the board. Okay? All right. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Unanimous vote. Five nothing. We appreciate the update from you this evening. We look forward to continued progress and to understanding what gets completed next, and we'll look forward to seeing the photos of the pen. Thank you. All right. The next item on our agenda this evening is the town manager's report. Thank you, Attorney Heath. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Madam Chair. The first item that I wanted to discuss with the board tonight is goal setting preparation. 
and I thought it would, might be useful um, to take just a few minutes to look at the goals that the board adopted last summer and updated uh, earlier, early in 2022, um, mostly because I think the progress we're making is remarkable, so I thought it would be a nice uh, way to, to explain that. Okay. Um, um, so, Kate, mm -hmm. are you going to share them by any chance on the screen, or do we want to just point out to people that they could read along as we're looking through these? by finding it in the packet online. Okay. It's on the packet online and it's on the select board um, page okay. under committees. Okay, um, if people are under interested board in goals. the goals that we're looking at. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's certainly an idea for future goal discussion. Thank you. So um, I, I won't belabor these, but funding for the Ridge Hill building demolition, we actually have bids that are coming in this week, so that's uh, moving. Um, working with the community farm to um, make a decision on a long-term plan for the farm, which the board did at your most recent meeting to extend the license agreement. Seeking funding for the DPW facility refresh, which was approved by town meeting. Um, evaluating RTS service delivery models, another study that was approved by town meeting. A uh, general bylaw that uh, would regulate household trash removal, um, approved by town meeting, and also um, town meeting in its um, approval of the operating budget approved an additional position that would help us with um, what we're calling colloquially the park ranger, but that could at least identify some trash uses and help us out. Um, seeking funding for the school administration building was also approved at the annual town meeting. The Cheney Street zoning referral, which was an easy one as the um, a proponent is not moving forward with that. Looking at ARPA funding for identified infrastructure projects, which we are, are, are doing, and we'll update you later on this evening. Um, relief programs for small businesses uh, also will be updating, but they have gone very well. Um, snow removal efforts, which uh, one of the things that the we additional labor that we have um, funded in the DPW budget will help with snow removal, and we're, as I think town meeting, as uh, Mr. Olson mentioned, uh, there's a lot of interest in all things uh, DPW this year, but looking at the snow removal pilot in the downtown is certainly something that I've put on the list for the board to discuss um, and your ne next goal setting. Zoning proposals and regulations guiding outdoor seating, that was all completed. Funding for a parking study, which we just received at town meeting. Um, creating a committee to evaluate the role of the Traffic Management Advisory Committee, the Transportation Committee, the Rail Trail Advisory Committee, and the Complete Streets Committee um, is working, and it is, uh, I know, Chair Cooley's strong wish that it be completed this fiscal year so that we can move the recommendations forward. Um, seeking funding for a quiet zone feasibility and design, we've included that in the capital plan, and we are looking at every opportunity that has been identified in state and federal funding that could help us with that, so we have a lot of um, places that we're looking for that funding. Evaluating the future use of the rail corridor between Dover and Newton, we actually received an earmark from the legislature's ARPA funding of 200000 and just today we submitted to the Commonwealth our draft specification for that project, and they will be sending us actually um, the funding in advance, and we will, as soon as we have our ARPA project manager on board, we will get that out. I would, I would note, um, Madam Chair, that we um, created that specification in uh, discussions with the city of Newton as well. Implementing the downtown redesign, we actually have a reset meeting pending in, in two weeks. Exploring ARPA for public art, I have an update for you on that tonight. Um, uh, funding for expanding services for mental and behavioral health, which we have identified, I have an update tonight. Um, efforts to hire, support, and retrain diverse staff, we actually had an earmark for um, funding for DEI training, and um, we are implementing that in the next two months. Um, framework for how community members can effectively engage in conversations around race, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Our uh, conversation series started in March and we'll have another session um, May 17th and again in June. Diversifying the candidate pool, we, are, we have done many items uh, on that front, including most notably the town meeting approval for us starting the process to get out of civil service. And we'll, I want to note on this one and on a few others that um, we will have our Director of Human Resources, Chuck Murphy Rombaletti, come into the board um, because there's been a lot of activity on this front and I thought it would be helpful for you. Um, 
encouraging nonprofits and civic groups uh, and businesses to ado adopt the Nuari vision statement, which we have um, many of those who have done, including in the biannual town survey, um, survey about how welcoming and inclusive the community is. I'll have an update on that, but we have done that as well. We've included that, uh, that question. Working with the Human Rights Committee, to develop the, determine, um, the discrimination complaint process. They have been working very hard on this, um, numerous meetings, and really wrestling with this project, and I, I really commend them. I think they're getting closer on that. Um, uh, developing a plan for ARPA funding to continue public health response, which we, have, we certainly have done. Actively monitor progress on law enforcement recommendations. The Chief has been here on multiple occasions, and most recently updating the annual report, um, which was very helpful and working with public safety unions to reach agreement on alternatives to civil service, as you know, very recently make, making progress on that. Um, working on the brewery pub uses, which we uh, ran out of time on, but we're hoping to pr pursue this fall. Meeting with the League of Women Voters, which the board did to discuss their study. Uh, I think the, the actual um, recommendations will be part of the board's discussions for goals this summer. Expanding the number of boards and committees that can host hybrid meetings by investing in technology. We've done that. We have many, many boards and committees who are meeting in a hybrid fashion, and they uh, very much appreciate that. Seeking additional package door licenses. This homework petition is actually the, the House bill um, is in third reading, and we have heard from House Council that there's some minor changes that they would like made to that, and we, we are hoping to have it in the next two weeks so that the board could review those before the um, formal legislative session ends in July. Creating a public comment component at the select board meetings, which you have recently done. Developing a select board orientation package, which we do, which uh, new members will have and will continue to avail themselves on. Um, expanding community engagement, uh, growing the newsletter. We actually started the newsletter in June of 21, and now we have 4,000 subscribers, so we're very proud of that. We started micro-polling, and we've restored um, the citizen satisfaction survey after a four-year hiatus. The, up, the town website has been refreshed to, to great um, public acclaim, and the new uh, mobile app is available and people are using it. Re renewing all three cable franchise licenses, we've re renewed one and the next one is coming very soon. And um, discussing the goal setting process, which we're doing as, as we speak. Um, developing a climate action plan, the committee is formed and is starting to work and identifying parcel acquisitions. We've been working um, to identify um, land that we can acquire to satisfy the land and water conservation fund requirements on us. So um, I think you'll agree that we're doing a lot of work in this, uh, in this year. What we wanted to talk to the board about is uh, the potential of sending the goals as you had adopted them and revised them in January to the other boards and committees and ask them um, if there are specific things that they would like the board to talk about for potential inclusion. And then uh, the idea might be to have the board set draft goals and then maybe have some community input on um, some of them. I mean, um, it's hard to... I mean, it's hard to uh, have make a decision between something that's a regulation that you have to do and something that you want to do, but certainly in the areas where there's discretion and you're deciding if you can add five things, which should they be, you might want to get community input on that. So if it makes sense, then we can, we can send this draft out to the board and the committees and see where they um, might want to see some of your focus, and then you would have that available to you when you meet over the summer. And this idea about sending it off to the other committees was something that we talked about a year ago that we thought maybe it would be a good first step before the goals started to talk about goals rather than just developing them completely on our own. But I would also say that if there's something that someone on the board has that they think should be considered as part of our goal setting discussion, that is also something that you can provide to Kate and she'll keep track of it and it can be in our list when we talk about what can be considered um, this summer as we look at resetting goals. I've received many, many of those already. <laughs> Madam Chair? I didn't expect people were shy. <laughs> right. And if I, if I could just add, and also what we heard from town meeting, uh, we'll make it on our goal list. I know we talked about um, looking at fees and the fee structure, for example. Yep. 
Um, and there were you know, a couple other things that were brought up that I can't recall right now, but I have notes on about minutes, but that we said we'd, we'd look at or we're going to review again. So yeah. uh, that'll also make it on to TMAC funding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> playground funding. <laughs> yeah, playground funding. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Correct. Yep. Oh, got it. Okay. Was, was one of them that's okay. come up, definitely. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Great. That makes sense. Good idea. Very good. So your next item, I think, is ARPA. Our ARPA report. Right. So we did provide you with the um, budget with the uh, expended balances. We're, we're moving ahead on um, hiring the project manager to run some of these programs. Um, we have received approval from the county for both the Walker Pond Phase Two project and the reservoir project. So um, that's very exciting. I would note um, with respect to economic development, out of the $260,000 in small business recovery grants that were approved in round one, we've um, reimbursed grantees a total of $103,210, and they have until October 31st to submit their reimbursement. So that project is moving forward. And then the application period for round two um, opened on April 15th and will close on the 13th, and we already have 10 applications for that. Uh, program, which you it will, may recall, expands to include nonprofits. So um, that's moving ahead. Um, the economic development component also includes the tents. We we've, we've, um, have two tents that uh, were installed, one on Greensfield and one on Eaton Plaza that will help us with uh, outdoor dining, given that the common won't be available for outdoor dining for the whole summer. And then uh, the, the last category of economic development is public art. And the um, Council for Arts and Culture has released their RFQ and call for artists for the mural in Needham Heights. And the mural will actually be on the side of the Carewell Urgent Care Building on West Street. And um, the submission deadline for those um, submissions from the artist community is June 8th. So that's um, an exciting project for us. With respect to um, Health and Human Services, we actually um, have hired a part-time clinician in Aging Services to help us respond. And then in Youth, uh, we hired a full-time clinician who's actually um, already meeting with 15 clients we weekly and running multiple groups, so that's been a big help for us. Um, we hired a clinical expert who specializes in family therapy and trauma, and we're actually hoping to have another uh, of those um, specialists on board soon. The Youth and Family Services has had um, an expressive art therapy workshops that they've been working on um, with our youth, and they have multiple parenting groups that are either starting now or they will start again in the fall. So um, the funds that are allocated to aging services and youth are for mental health services are um, being put to good use. And just finally, in the health area, um, our nurses and our, our contact tracers are continuing to work, particularly in the um, the high use communities, like the school high risk communities in the schools and the nursing homes. And then our epidemiologist has just been really helpful in terms of educating the public and making sure that the information can be um, you re re understood by the public. And they're monitoring trends and working with the schools um, and the school safety committee. So that is the update. We'd be happy to answer any questions on the use of our. $9.1 million ARPA funds. So Kate, as people are reading this, I just want to be sure that they understand um, where it says total expended, I think that's an expended to date and the amount available doesn't mean that we don't have a purpose for something. It's actually used for the purposes that you just talked about. I don't know that there's any dollars in here that we currently haven't found a use for. It's a question of timing with when those funds are expended. Right. The, most of the projects are two-year projects. Yeah. There, we do have a little bit of um, not yet assigned, but it's very small. So um, if it, that, that was intended in the public health area, particularly in case something came up that we didn't know about. So the not yet assigned is that difference between the 9.2 and the 8.75, basically, I think? The, the not yet assigned would be, for instance, under the category of COVID direct impact. We have a budget of 92000 that's not yet assigned. The total expended of 442000 ah. is, is really just the ongoing. Most, okay. most of these funds have not yet been spent, I think is your point. Um, the vast majority of it is in the water and sewer and stormwater area, and those projects haven't started. Okay. That's great. Questions? Marcus. And I, I know that we know this, but if someone's just looking at this and they see the one year, two years, two years next to um, some of these categories, what happens after those two years with those positions? So, you know, the, 
it, it will really depend on what the use was. Contact tracers, we probably won't be continuing contact tracing. I would be shocked if the Director of Health and Human Services didn't put an epidemiologist request in for his ongoing budget because it's been invaluable for us and we know um, the world of uh, health is only getting more confusing and not less. So uh, the departments all have the opportunity uh, when the second year is approaching to seek funding in the operating budget or otherwise. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying. Mm -hmm. I would wonder if something like the epidemiologist might be a shared resource yeah, regionally. That seems like a candidate for yeah. that type of thing. Other comments? Anybody? The, um, the projects for which we can use ARPA funds are like time limited, right? We have to spend this money by a certain time. Yes. We, it, since none of them have started, I, I don't call it the, I mean, I think it's 24, right? So. Um, the funds have to be either spent or committed by 24. So anyone, anything that's a salary, the end date is December of 24. But a major sewer construction, as long as the contract has been let, we have through 26 to finish it. That's where the, the water sewer drain projects will be in the end. And so Heidi, the, um, there's both some constraints on when it's spent and certainly on what yeah. it might yeah. be spent on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Other items in the report? Um, under Tom Manager's report, I have three other things to report. Um, I did note that our 2022 community survey has been um, mailed out. We, st um, the, the, we still do a mailing because we have a, it's a statistically valid study. It was mailed to 2,800 uh, households in town. Um, what the company Polco is now doing is allowing, um, in addition to that statistically valid report, we can gather a lot more feedback by allowing anybody who wants to, to weigh in on the same questions. And so that is what we're going to be doing starting next week, and we'll be pushing that out over, over social media and through our website. So um, anybody who can just put in their email can s sign in and take the, um, the survey and then they'd be able to answer the questions. And it's just more data is helpful um, and it will complement the, the study that we have that we had done starting in 2008. So um, we're just really glad to get back to that because it was really a useful measure um, looking, you know, you can look at us benchmarked across the country and it was interesting and it was helpful to see where we were shining nationally, but mostly we wanted to see where the ups and downs were um, in our own trend data. So, and they do go, they do tend to go up and down. So, and it's a really bad winter. Sometimes people talk about sidewalks and <laughs> when, it's, when it's really hot, they talk about the pool. So, yeah, so that's that. Um, the second item is that you'll recall um, we talked to you about seeking designation as a housing choice community and we have been approved um, by the governor and the lieutenant governor. In the most recent round, seven new communities joined the 78 currently designated housing choice communities. So we're, we're eligible to, ride, uh, to apply for special grants and it gives us points on uh, the grants that we already participate in like MassWorks and green communities. So um, that's, that's exciting. It recognizes that we've done um, a lot of work to uh, encourage additional housing in town. And finally, um, Madam Chair, I just wanted to thank the board and uh, the other boards and committees in town meeting for for the amazing support that we received this year for so many of, our, of the initiatives that we have heard from the public. Um, we can't do everything at once and so it can be hard when you get to town meeting after two years um, finally getting to asking for the money to do the study um, and then people want more studies and, and, and as we all know the, those ideas and I think Mr. Brawley just said it, they go in the queue and uh, we really do consider them when we move forward. I would also, I just really wanted to say that the I think it's a hallmark of Needham that our employee relations and our relations with our unions, but the, um, in this case, public, uh, public safety, police, and fire, have always been excellent. And I think it's why it's such a well-run community. And I just really um, grateful for the support of town meeting, understanding that we've all worked really hard on the issues, um, and I think that their support just means everything to us, and I know to the to the departments. Great. Thank you. Any other questions for the town manager? Then um, I, we do have an item for uh, board discussion of any committee reports. I have not heard that anybody wishes to Madam report Shea. one. I uh, just would like Mr. to move the consent agenda. <laughs> Excellent idea, Mr. Borelli. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Usually I write that somewhere I know, in my right? notes so I remember. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Five nothing for the consent agenda. Thank you so much.
any committee reports? If there are none, then I would welcome a motion to adjourn while it's still sunny outside. <laughs> Move we adjourn. I second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. We are adjourned. Coverage of the Needham Select Board is brought to you by Louise Condon Realty, representing buyers and sellers since 1985.